Hello, good day. We survived. We survived the Christmas, the uh, the Christmas, the big, you know, two five, the Christ, Christmas day. But listen, it doesn't get, it doesn't stop. It gets better. Do you know that there is that gift in, and we're going to talk about that, about the prophetic. That it, in the, your baptism, you were baptized. For those who were baptized, were baptized not only in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but as a priest, prophet, and king. Uh, not so much like an ordained priest, but we have the virtue and graces. You know, we're like the little priest. You're the little priest, prophet, and king. But that's the anointing that um, comes upon you when you, uh, and then when you call upon that, uh, on those graces, you know, God begins to do wonderful things. So there are a lot of things that are coming down the pike in 2018. And in the prophetic, God has uh, ordained a certain era you know, for these giftings. And you, you sometimes you, if you put, go on to Facebook, especially on my page, Dr. Sherl, WSCIRO, uh, uh, you will start to see some of my friends, you know, who are very, very strong in the gift of the prophetic that um, they'll get on and they'll do a video, maybe some will do an hour, some will do a half an hour, about what God has for, you know, each um, season. Uh, and he, he's, he loves seasons. He gives us time so we can, it's a gift to us, so we can work out our life and come into the, the call that he has for each and every one of us, okay? So, so that's the nature, that's the reason for the prophetic gift. And, um, and I go in more into the why behind the prophetic gift, and so you can understand that in this segment of the inner room. And, you know, from that, from, you know, probably in the next couple of segments, we're gonna have, I'm going to have some of my friends uh, Dr. Sheryl's friends come on who have a similar gift in, and they may flow in a different area, but it's all to for your benefit and your family's benefit. And uh, they have some very exciting things uh, coming down the pike in the spring. We're going to have someone um, on who's done, who, who actually produced a show, call, uh, actually a movie called um, The Best Thing, and his name is uh, Carl. Um, what is Carl? Oh, well, Prophet Carl. I'll call him Prophet. But I'm sure he, he wouldn't want me to uh, to say that. But, you know, he's just an ordinary man doing ordinary things for the Lord as um, a film producer. And he's going to be in the Manchester area. And he just he just IM'd me on Facebook and said, he'll love to be on in the spring. So look, I, we're going to look forward to just talking about his new movie. And, and, uh, and, and he's going to have a word for you, too. So... Enjoy the rest of the show, and Happy New Year. Okay, God's got a lot of things in store for you. All right, everyone. Whoa, welcome to uh, the third show called The Inner Room. I'm Dr. Shirley Caniff here, your co-host. I'm here with my friends, but the only friend I'm here with, well, I have some friends in the studio, in a greater studio, uh, Patrick and Mike. <laughs> They're right over there doing their thing. Say hi, everybody. Um, but I have my husband here, you know, who's been a, a dear friend to me even before we, we got married. We're like, I, I was in some a situation prior to us, and um, God freed us to get married in a church. But I actually, we actually found out that we knew each other since 1988. I met his mother first before I even knew he was going to be my husband. And I knew my sister in law first. And, um, and another capacity when I was driving buses, and when he introduced me to his family on Thanksgiving, it was like I knew some of the family members with before. <laughs> they were like, oh, I know you, I know you. So they, it was like really, really funny how God did that um, because he knew that, you know, what, he, what we were going to do later on in life. Okay, so after my kids woke up, uh, after my kids grew up. So anyways, listen, we have um, a power pack um, show today and 
we're live from the inner room actually pre-broadcasted live we're still we're alive here <laughs> in the inner room and we're going to um peer into through the lens of the prophetic what the lord is wanting to do in his people that he wants to call his own those who are not baptized and those who are and we are going we're we're, we're going to really really seek the mind of god for this I, I have an idea of what it what it is but we'll see as you delve more into the prophetic this you walk through this door and that door and this door and that door and doors are going to be open and so we're we actually going to start off with a dream that i had have that i had about doors okay um i actually talked about this in greater detail um on facebook but um for those who want to understand what the prophetic's all about it's not it is not i just want to say it's not fortune telling okay that uh, when you people go to psychics and everything there might be people with some natural giftings uh, that they've been born with and handed down from generation to generation. Then there are some that, you know, af after they resigned their, you know, they, they re um, signed over their gifts to the Lord, he made it even better. And then there are people that, you know, they didn't start off prophetic, but all of a sudden the, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began to prophesy and speak in powerful tongues. Um, and we are going to start with um, Acts. Jeff, honey, Scripture in Acts is what, what's uh, about the Holy Spirit. Um, chapter 2. Chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. Coming of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And um, y y I, I feel like I need to give an, uh, uh, you know, to some people out there that want to know more about this, you know, a foundation of, you know, from what, you know, how, how we're called to, to uh, position ourselves um, to hear from God in this in the studio, okay. Um, yes, and then we'll talk about hearing the voice of God, and then we'll go into what the Lord is, is saying, okay. But we kind of talked more about that um, uh, in the previous show uh, for the Advent broadcast, where Mary, um, you know, the, uh, the angel Gabriel came to Mary. How do we know it was an angel? It just, the angel just appeared in power and glory, and the room showed with lots of light. And all of a sudden, just you know, this light hovered over Mary, and um, and then a voice came from this light, and uh, things began to happen. Uh, she was shaken to her core of her being, and this is what happens in a lot of visitations. That's the difference between the psychic and those who profess to be psychic and they only get a portion of that and but uh, lots of times you don't hear about being uh, shaken to your core and why do you get shaken from the core because the weight of um the weight of our spirit man is light and it sends up and our soul it has so much um, things that hold us to the earth that it weights us down so what, what is being shaken are things that are like an antithesis against, um, you know, uh, the things of God, you know, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. So, so that, you know, that gets in the way. So God wants us to be more transparent in him. And this is, and this is what happens. This is what happens in the inner room and in the inner chambers between you and God. And it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, you know. It's, it's, I, one time I was asked, you know, the, when the Lord came upon me, I'm like, Jesus, you know, I asked, I, I, I invited him and I'm like, you do whatever you, it is because whatever it was in me, I just didn't want, I don't want it. I just wanted to, you know, to, I wanted to do, I wanted to do his will and you know, whatever that was, because things weren't going right. Everything was disorganized in my life. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I can't go wrong by asking. Um, and where was I going with this? So let's go to Psalm 29 about the significance of the voice of the Lord and then we're going to go to um, Acts 2 and uh, Jeff did you want to read anything about Psalm 29 here? Psalm 29? Yeah, sure. Psalm, 20, Psalm 29 I'm going to I'll give it to you and then you know you can give it to me for um, Acts 2 and then we're going to go into the prophetic word uh, for 2018 um, but we're going to release a blessing so that maybe God will open up you know 
your eyes, spiritual eyesight. Okay, so Jeff is going to read uh, Psalm 29. The voice of the Lord hovers. The voice of the Lord cries glory. So, all right. So, Jeff, just come up to the mic. Psalm 29. Mm-hmm. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. Mm. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The vo- Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. And the Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, um, Jeff, for reading that. Um, you know, we need to recognize his voice. Um, sometime in the spring after Lent, we're going to, uh, in the how many weeks of Pentecost? Will it be like five weeks or something like that? Um, we're going to um, do a Life of the Spirit seminar on, in, in the inner room, just for you. Just for you, just for your families. Okay, so um, we're kind of using this as a prime pump, um, especially during Christmas where everybody's already starting to focus in on, um, you know, the love of Christ and peace on earth and good goodwill to men and, and good cheer and all these things, these wonderful things. Um, and um, one gentleman in first, from First Kings, his name was Ezekiel, who was a prophet. But he was a prophet that wanted to flee. He was fleeing from Jezebel, a, a, a witch, uh, who hated prophets because he, prophets exposed people. And so, you know, back then, uh, you know, when the Holy Spirit would come, he didn't come from within because we have the kingdom. Right now, we have the kingdom of God within because of what Jesus did um, on the cross. And, 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 and after, you know, when he sent the Holy Spirit to commission the church to bring us into... Um, truth um we, you know he started working on the inner heart of man but in the old testament the holy spirit would he would hover he, he's come he came upon people uh and they, they they were radically changed so now we have the luxury of the not only the holy spirit coming upon us and and groups of people but coming from within and going out you know especially when we say yes to the holy spirit uh but um, ezekiel I mean, Isaiah, kings, uh, Elijah and um, kings were so afraid of, um, you know, what this witch was going to do to him um, that he, he, you know, God caught up with him and said, let's see, go, uh, he's, the Lord appears, that's Solomon. I know it's not, I'm not doing Solomon. I'm doing Elijah. Where is that chapter? Okay. Okay, okay. All righty. Um, here we go. See, Dr. Shul has to be, I have to have everything uh, mapped out here. Jeffany, was that the, sev- what was um, the Elijah um, anointing? Okay, Elijah showing up. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Lord Jesus, we just ask you to come and touch your people. Um, especially as I try to find this chapter. Here we go. The Lord appears to Elijah. All right. Let's see what we. What yeah, it is um, King, uh, First Kings chapter nineteen, and I'm going to read from the plight that actually pushed 
and catapulted Elijah to the attention of God. Okay. Um, Elijah flees Horeb. All right. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel, so there was false prophets back then, and then there was real prophets, okay? Um, so now he, uh, he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, gods with a little g, um, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. Elijah was afraid. So fear seized Elijah, right? And he ran for his life, okay? Uh, when he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. A lot of back then, even then, um, prophets, you know, because they were a very unusual people, um, they we often go into solitude, into deserts, you know, where they hear no other voice you know, but that of God. Okay, and they would get their instructions. They would pour out themselves and, and fast for 40 days and, and be transformed in the process. So Elijah was afraid and ran for his life when he came to Beersheba in Judah. He left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I mean, th this is how heavy and serious things were. You know, people weren't approving of him because he would say these what these things, and and, and God would move in power and glory. But it wasn't always the way that <laughs> it wasn't nice. It wasn't always nice because it was so much evil then, uh, and things like that. So um, he said, "I have had enough." Lord, he said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then, the, then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All right. So we thought, like I talked about, you know, I'm thinking I'm falling asleep. And all of a sudden, the Lord wakes me up in the spirit. And I'm in another place. Uh, this is what happens in the prophetic. All right. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals in a jar of water he ate and drank and then lay down again the angel of the lord came back a second time and touched him and said get up and eat for the journey is too much for you so he got up and ate and drank strengthened by that food all right so it may have been a food in the spirit in this dream that this was going on but dreams are real you know especially in the prophetic dreams are much more real than life itself you know uh, on this side because things are going on interiorly in the prophetic what happens is that before things manifest in the natural um god dreams it into you spiritually first and then fulfills it in your life so that's why it says in one of the scriptures for my people perish for lack of vision lack of knowledge not lack of knowledge from heaven okay and you can get that lack of knowledge you can get that knowledge not lack of knowledge you can get that knowledge through the you know rep prophetic revelation uh, through a dream or vision or the prophetic word okay um yeah an inspiration so strengthened by that food he traveled 40 days and it could be spiritual food. It doesn't necessarily. It could be a, some, a substance from heaven that looks like food and tastes like food <laughs> when, you're, you're, you're eating and, when you're, and you're eating in your dream. And then it will fill you up with so much power. Then when you wake up, you're like, whoa, you feel different. You look different. You act different. Strengthened by that food. Somebody needs to know this. Somebody experienced this. I can. Why am I going? This is like the third time I'm visiting the scripture. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, <laughs> the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. You could do that whenever the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You could sleep, your, lay you down, you know, a cave, you know, you, instead of the Howard Johnson's or the Holiday Inn. It's like a cave looks pretty good when you have the Holy Spirit, you know, all over you. You know, it, it's... It's, you know, like he makes life look, appears to be so much better than it is if you looked at life with natural eyes. 
the Lord appears to Elijah, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Remember the last show we asked, what are you doing? You know, God's always asking his people, where are you? What are you doing? Where are you and what are you doing? Okay. Those are, that's called an appeal to your conscience, to your spiritual conscience. He, he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I would say, I'm just going to clarify that, the Israelites of the day, right, back then. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by, all right? So he's setting him up for visitation, okay? He said, even in his fear. You know, when the angel came to the, bless, you know, to the Virgin Mary, uh, before she conceived of the Holy Spirit, when, as before the Holy Spirit hovered over her, the angel had to come, angel Gabriel, a messenger from God had to come to tell her to, to lay any fear aside, to lay it at rest, that do not fear. That was the first thing. Do not fear. This is of God. Do not fear. All right. So it, before any visitation, the Lord deals with his people with fear because something otherworldly is coming into the world. <laughs> you know, one of the scriptures says that greater is he, which is Jesus, is in you than he is in the world. You know, the enemy can bring in fear to the world, but greater is he who is in you who is perfect love and casts out all fear. And he is greater than the fear of the one who sends fear to the world. You got it? All right. So, wow. Jesus. Oh, Lord, we just ask right now that you deliver your people Anyone right now experiencing the fear of post-trauma in any situation, any crisis situation, whether it be national crisis or uh, family crisis or individual psychological, psycho-spiritual, emotional crisis, Lord, that you would deliver your people from that fear that tends to, you know, comes to, you know that, that see, they seizes them, that tries to consume them right now. And Lord, we ask that you would send forth your love and your Holy Spirit in your comfort, your comfort of your Holy Spirit to bring them into truth and to, and, and, and to surround them with the power of your love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go back to the Elijah story. Because this is, this is ministering to somebody here. I can feel it. I can feel it in the Holy Ghost. Whoa. Hmm. Yes, so the Lord said, Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, in my presence, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind <sighs> tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. <sighs> After the wind, there was an earthquake, you know, it rumble. It was rumbling. It was shaking. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came fire, came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, whisper, whisper, that still small voice, he pulled his cloak over his face because he realized this is the Lord. And went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then the voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Okay. He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint 
Hazael, king over Aram, also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, from Abel Mohala, to succeed you as a prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escaped the sword of Hazael, and Elijah will put to death any who escaped the, word, the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. Now, now, when you're in a prophetic now, in a new dispensation of the Holy Spirit, the only death that most of the time you're going to see is, is this is going to experience death to self. Because in order for you to flow more fully in the prophetic, you got to die to those things, those areas of the flesh that get in the way. That get in the way. And, you know, this is, this is what's needed, okay? But God has a very powerful word for what he's going to be doing to his people and those who are destined to be his people in 2018. Um, and it's going to, the United States is not going to be the same again. Um, and that's one of the reasons uh, I think this year, that this year uh, from 2016 on, what's going on is that, you know, a lot of people losing hope because of things that are changing rapidly and not, you know, and, you know, people is not as secure as they once were in the last eight years. But there's a shaking going on, and we're going to talk about that um, very shortly, okay? Um, I want to also talk about Samuel's experience from First Samuel. Well, these are all the scriptures that I wanted to talk about in the previous broadcast, but um, it was important for us to dedicate that show to Mary because uh, it was the feast day of the Immaculate um, yeah, the, the immaculate. The, yeah, she was the immaculate uh, conception. Okay. Uh, the the Lord calls Samuel. You know, did you you all know you're all called, you're all called for a purpose. And right now, God's about ready to reveal just what that is in 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 dif in different ways um, for people. Um, let that be your Christmas gift. <laughs> he wants to do a new thing. The Lord calls Samuel. Jeff, honey. Mm -hmm. Here, I want you to read the um, that the the Lord calling Samuel. I want. I think it's going to be very beneficial if you read it to many people. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lord, Lord calls Samuel. The calling, is, yeah. Come up to the mic. Yeah. First Samuel chapter three. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare; there were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and laid down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son Eli said, I, do not, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. 
And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. At that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from the beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sins he knew about. His sons made themselves contemptible, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned, for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning, and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, son, Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then he, then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Silo, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word came to all Israel. Wow. So what, do you, what, what, what did that scripture um, say to you, Jeff, as you were reading it? God, God calls. Yes. But the question is, are we listening? Now, Samuel was young, and he needed guidance. Mm -hmm. But how many times is God speaking to us, and we discern it to death? Mm -hmm. And we say, oh, i got to pray about that. When it turns out that maybe praying about that is an avoidance. <laughs> or, may, or maybe you're sharing it, you know, people are sharing it with the wrong person. And they're like, well, I think maybe you had too much garlic. And, you know, God doesn't speak to his people today. And so they miss, like, you know, like the or, blessing. Like Mr. Scrooge. Oh, you're just a, that was just a piece of spoiled potato. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, well, thank you for for reading that, you know. Thank you for reading that. Um, I'm going to go into a, a, dr a dream vision that I had about, it's, it goes along with the the word for 2018, and uh, I'm just going to, um, I wanted to read something about the, um, you know, uh, I want to read something from um, Acts 2. So I want to say, at my, the goal here in the inner room is to, bring you closer into the inner room of your lives between, you know, that intimate place between, in your heart, between where you, you and God can, um, you and the Lord can meet, okay? Because he, he really loves, he does love people, contrary to what others may, may say, you know. It's, it's, it's not so much that um, God is doing these, allowing these evil things to happen, it's that Man's heart has grown so cold away from the Lord that this is what happens in the world. But um, his mercy is that he doesn't destroy the world because he wants to give his people time to come to him. And and we can mitigate um, a lot of these changes through prayer, but we have to develop that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship in the inner room uh, with, with the Lord, okay? With the Lord. Uh, not by ourselves, but with the Lord. And... You know, I'm, th I'm thinking th that maybe I need to tell you two dreams. One, when I was a single parent, and when, you know, and when one of my children had had uh, actually drowned, and I'm, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to go back to that because I think that um, this will actually help um, with people that kind of like um, teeter tottering with what God wants to do in their life, okay? Because God's all about family. And that's, you know, we're, you know, he's really loving the family, although there's a lot of, in, in the area where there's a lot of battle, um, war-torn areas, um, is in the family, especially here in the United States, but all over the world, but a lot, you know, in the United States. Okay. So we're going to talk 
we're going to bring people through a, a, a Life in the Spirit seminar just for podcasts in the inner room uh, in the spring, right around the Pentecost, because that's what the Lord was showing me we should do. Because he wants, you know, and we're going to have more than me just speaking. We're going to have some speakers come and, and teach the various aspects of of the walk with the Lord and what that entails and how to enter into the courts of heaven um, through Jesus, okay? In our prayers. Yeah, you, li- you like that, huh? Mm-hmm. You like that? <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. So anyways, um, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, all right? When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. My heart is burning as I'm talking about this. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven, under the open heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them in his own language without understand, without being taught the other language, right? Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Aelamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Persia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to, Juda- to, Juda- to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring, what were they declaring? The wonders of God in our own tongues. Isn't that amazing? That's, the, that's one of the first miracles of Pentecost. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? What does it all mean for us? Now we're caught up in this inner room, and this was actually in the upper room. Upper room in the inner room of the upper room, right? Inner room of the upper room. The Holy Spirit was visiting his people in the inner room of the, uh, in, in the upper room, in the inner room, interiorly. And also, he came upon them exteriorly. Okay, someone needs to hear that. He came upon them exteriorly, and he came into them. So he can have an intimate relationship. So he can see into them. And they can see into him. Interiorly. Okay. Amazed and perplexed. They ask one another. What does this mean? So in the other word. You know. God asked. It from the book of Genesis. From the previous show. Um, Adam. Where are you? And. Um, and. Um, and. What are you doing? And the other thing is, so it's where are you? What are you doing? And then what we ask back to God, especially in prayer, especially after a move, what does this mean, God? What does this mean? You know, most of the time we go and pray just what we want. But when God's about ready to speak to you or he does, uh, he moves, our, our response should be, Lord, what does this mean? He'll tell you. He'll tell you what it means through a dream, through vision, through inspiration. But he will. Some, however, made fun of them and said they have no, they had too much wine. <laughs> they had too much wine. And then Peter addressed the crowd and stood up and he said, uh, with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, follow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem. Let me explain this one thing to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people throughout the earth. Throughout the earth, and not only in in that time period, but in all the other time periods in the last days. 
Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will, not, not may be saved, but will be saved because his name is so majestic and powerful and glorious and full of life and full of love. Wow. And then he, he, Peter goes on to say, we always miss this. He goes on to say, men of Israel, listen to this. Because they had to talk to the men first to convince the men. You can always, com the first people to actually see Jesus in his resurrected form after um, his death on the cross were women. Women seem to, you know, understand things more of the spiritual more because they're, they're more docile, you know. Not, you know, men catch up. But, but in this strange way, during this Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, it was all the men were there. And Peter, the first pope, addressed them as his first congregation, the men of Israel. And that's what God, God wants to touch men in this in day and age. He wants Amen. to touch men to be, take their spiritual, author, their rightful spiritual authority in their home spiritually. Okay? But they have to, you know, there's a, you know, that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of things going on, a lot of, Men are going through identity crisis because God wants, you know, God's allowing this to happen so he can, they, once they cry out to him, he's going to fill them with power and fill them with glory. So start, keep praying for the healing of the men in this nation, in Jesus' name, for them to assume the rightful place in the Lord. Jeff, you have something that you want to say. You're looking at me like, oh, well, you're a man. What, do you, what, do you, what does this mean for you before I go on? What does this mean for you? Are you dumbfounded because your I, wife is talking no, like this? I, I am kind of dumbfounded, but not because I don't have anything to say. It's <laughs> like, where did it go? Yeah. Well, well, um, when it comes back to you, I'll signal. Yeah, you'll give me a signal, okay? Um, so, men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, all right, which God did among you through him. As you yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to, to death by nailing him on the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. It was so it had so much power and glory going through him. Resurrection power, resurrection glory. David, kind of what people experience in God encounters, but nearly, I'm, I'm sure it was a lot more resurrection power and resurrection glory going on when Jesus was raised from the dead because the whole earth shook. The big stone was rolled away by the angel and caused the guards that were guarding in the tomb to fall into a deep sleep. All this was going on upon the resurrection of Jesus. Pretty, pretty impressive, right? I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave. Nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with your joy in your presence, you know, and people say, well, you know, all right, that's all good. And why, why are we still, why are people still dying? Interiorly, death took on another, um, another, uh, what can you say, Jeff? Death took on another um, dimension. Before, either everybody that died went into the bosom of Abraham. After Jesus um, died on the cross and rose again from the dead and was resurrected and sent us his Holy Spirit 
um, he took the sting or the power out of death to bring people to the point of actually almost going to hell or Hades or that rest in place in the bosom of Abraham. Um, right now we have purgatory where people can get purged before they actually go step into heaven. But what happens is that Jesus likened death into a sleep. And he closed, you know, you, you fall asleep and then you, you open your eyes and you're in another place. Okay. And a lot of people that have died and come back have actually saw that place. So, um, yeah, that, that is, you know, there's a mystery in this, but, um, thank God we live in this dispensation. We have something to look forward to, but it's all dependent on how you live your life. You know, um, some people have, you know, deathbed experiences. Um, you know, you've heard people say, you know, I've seen angels. I see Mary, I see Jesus, Joseph, and especially if they reconcile with their you know, family members. And that's why we talked about reconciliation in, at the uh, first uh, broadcast um, in the inner room. It was so important, especially when a, one generation is coming you know, into their own and one another generation is leaving in the same family group. Yeah. Uh, it's very important for that reconciliation to happen for the blessings to continue to flow. Okay. So it says, brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on, an oath, on oath that he would uh, place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. Um, God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of that fact. Okay. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit. And, he, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all of Israel be assured, spiritual Israel and physical Israel, uh, of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucify, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter, and the other apostles, Peter, the first pope, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promises for you and your children and your children's children for all of who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God, our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. In that day, about 3,000, that's a lot for that time, 3,000 were added to the number that day. And to this day, we have the churches, different denominations and everything. And so, you know, um, what I like about the Christmas season is that we were reminded of this on, on different levels, you know, I mean, you know, for four weeks, but, you know, it, it, we get it, we get it, and then somehow we lose it, we, 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 you know, most people do, and, you know, except for the very few who, you know, really love and sold out for the Lord, but, you know, it's designed, the season is designed to um, really, really, really meditate on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, especially his birth, and so, and how he came to a 14-year-old um, uh, unmarried. young woman, what did you say, Jeff? Unmarried young woman. Unmarried young woman, who was pledged to be married, you know, uh, and uh, but the angel had to work on Joseph too. He gave him a dream. I love when God does that, and told him this is of the Holy Spirit, and that was all right with Joseph. He, uh, obviously, that true proved to him that sh she was faithful to him and she didn't cheat on him, and and that, and everything was good. So. <laughs> So we're coming back into the prophetic right now. So I wanted to teach, to show you how the Lord um, sends his mission, you know, missionary angels from heaven, Angel Gabriel, to, to you know, inform people what's going on, and how he speaks to people in a small, still small voice, how he speaks to you, and he really hovers over his people. But back back then, 
over, you know, in the Old Testament, he was coming upon people. Now he comes upon us and through us in the Holy Spirit. And, and we're never the same again. And this is what he wants for us. This is what he wants for you. And uh, like I said er, um, earlier, we are going to really step by step um, take people through a, like a life in the spirit seminar to come to know, to come to this place that they can, you can actually make that decision, you know, instead of it being forced upon you. And we'll be praying into these things from here to then to that time period. But, um, you know, in the inner room today, um, I just wanted to share with you for, for those who are in, in, in impossible situation, how God, he really loves families. He really, really wants to come to families. Families are the very fabric of society. And good things can come from families. And right now, the, the Lord's dealing with wounds. So for 2018, the Lord usually starts, you know, starts with a um, prophetic word through a dream. So I'm going to you know, start with this dream vision. Um, but pre pre before then, w my first initial experience with um, the Lord obliterated my doubter and my brain that my prayers do are answered. He does listen. Because I used to always pray, pray guessing, Lord, I'm praying now. Do you think? And I would, set, you know, write down my list, and you know, and uh, I'm like, I don't know. Are you really? Is it? Are you really listening to me, Lord? I know I did this th before and that before. I know I'm forgiven, but you know, you know, are you really listening? You know, and I used to pray like that, right? In doubt. And one day, one time, um, I think it was, I would say, the summer of 1995. I was, um, I was in my single parent days, four of us, four kids, and we were living in a two bedroom place in Brockton. And um, I, I don't think I was actually, I wasn't driving anything then, but um, I was doing a lot of prayer, a lot of praying. And there was about, there was something that was changing. Um, we had some tenants that came in, and they were the wrong tenants. And I knew it in the spirit. And uh, the, I remember the landlord telling me, he knew I, we were, you know, we used to pray together a lot. And uh, he knew that God, you know, was speaking. And, but I was, I was still like, all right, do I have to, in order to hear from God, do I have to like, um, four minutes? Okay. <laughs> okay. In order to hear from, I, I, that was my um, trusty uh, manager now telling me I have four minutes. So to make a uh, long story short, um, anyways, maybe I should save that for the next time. I'm going to have to save that for the next show. But listen, God, what, what God wants to do for families is that he wants to um, show up. He wants to break down the barriers um, that have prevented people from coming to him in, in droves um, in 2018. And he wants, to, wants families to just forgive one another especially this holiday season, so you can come into what he has for, for families in 2018. He wants to pour his Holy Spirit upon you and through you, okay, in such a way that as you trans get transformed, you know, as individuals and families become transformed, there's going to be so much love generated. It's going to affect society. And I see this on many levels because we have nothing left. We have nothing left but love, nothing left but God, that's all we have left. We, we can't even rely on the government for anything, for any assistance. So God is saying that he is, all, he is more than enough for you. Um, he wants to fill you. He wants to love on you and just reach out to him. His hand is upon your families. Um, if you go to Facebook, you're going to see, um, I, we have, my, you know, I have a young son who's autistic. He's 26 years old. I have four kids. One, my oldest one is, uh, going to get married in a couple of weeks, December 30th. Yay, God. And, uh, but, jo um, my other son, Joshua is, um, is silent. He's a silent witness for the Lord. And, um, you know, one little Audrey Santos from uh, Worcester, when she was alive, God used her very powerfully. 
uh, came to my dream is that God wants to um, touch, you, you know, your son. Uh, his hand is upon him. And literally, my husband took a picture of jo uh, Josh on one of the visits, and the hand came out. You, if you want to see the hand of God, it's not even photoshopped. You know, we, can, we showed um, the manager here of MM MMTV a couple of weeks ago that hand. And you can see the sleeve. You can see the long hand pulling something off his neck, you know, because, you know, that's the place where the vocal cords are. And, um, you know, to this day, Josh is very, very, you know, contemplative. And we do pray with him. I can actually visit him for Christmas. So, you know, God is a God of families. He loves his people. He loves families. He wants to pour out a spirit upon families and change um, change the, the, the communities in which you live and in the face of the earth. And anybody that has these testimonies, feel free to call MMTV <laughs> and, um, you know, ask for Patrick. And, and Patrick will get in contact with us um, here at the inner room. And um, we will pray with you, you know, if you want to even give a testimony and come in on the podcast and, and share what God's been doing as you listen to these podcasts that we would love to hear you. And, um, that, that's all I'm going to say. And as the Lord uh, reveals more what he's going to do in 2018, we're going to come and share through dreams and visions until the next time. Thanks for visiting the inner room. God bless you. Love you. Wasn't that wow? It was a big wow. I tell you, at the end of the show, it was it was guys had it coming in there, and before Patrick came over and said, "We got five minutes left," <laughs> but you know what? That's just like the Lord to just wait, you know, it, it, to the end, and uh, because at His end is actually a beginning, right? So you know, I felt like we gave a beginning word prophetic word that God is there for families, okay? And that's why we're doing the inner, the inner room because he wants to come into your, the inner room of your heart in your living rooms, okay? Or wherever you get this podcast. And he, and he wants to be the difference that makes the difference. And like I said earlier, you know, in the, in the previous show, we are going to um, continue with this, you know, because he, God has things in store, and he's not a bad, he's not, he's not like one of those fathers that want to punish his children. He loves his children, but there are many of us, there are many people, many humans that have been poor representatives of that. But God wants to turn things around and he wants to, you know, he wants to build trust and in intimate relationship, the good intimacy between you and him, okay, and your family. So you can come into that generational blessing that extends to the seventh generation. All right, so it's our hope and intention, attention, intention that you'll never be the same again. All right, so trust God and lean not on your own understanding. This is Psalm 37. And trust in his ways, and he will act on your behalf. God bless you. Until the next time. Love you. Bye. Cool.